Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, quickly to set the context, uh, uh, as we all know, uh, all you respected leaders have, I have been interacting with, we have been interacting with, there has been exponential rise in data and the data driven uh, business outcomes we all are, all are repeatedly talking about. The growing adoption of digital channels across uh, nations and industries, the amount is growing at a splendid pace and it has dramatically increased since the last two years especially after the uh, pandemic, uh, you know, pandemic driven home stuck environment and op obviously the hybrid work environment. In these disruptive times, getting pertinent and focus insight has become, uh, you know, a key focus area for enterprise, enterprises to survive, thrive, and of course, uh, innovate and ex expand their operations. Well, uh, we all know uh, businesses must heavily rely on data driven advanced analytics as part of their transformation strategy to give their users exceptional experiences while also evaluating existing models since the status quo has been questioned. No more we rely on traditional systems. I mean, we all, uh, uh, it's, it's an interesting panel comprised of uh, some of the established enterprises, startups, uh, eminent CIOs, who, who all have different, uh, uh, you know, different way of functioning and looking at interesting uh, data-driven business outcomes. So it takes a lot of effort uh, in terms of people, processes, and technologies to scale uh, uh, data systematically and provide accurate future forecast. And in today's session, we'll delve deeper into how can organization become, uh, become and stay data uh, driven, the foundation of intelligent enterprise, the key challenges that uh, established leaders like you have been facing while putting strong analytics agenda in place and how to address them the best approaches and solution, opportunity and threat analysis, and of course, what's new in smart analytics and what's coming up. To set the, uh, you know, to set the uh, context, I would uh, like to uh, start the discussion with Mr. Deepak Bhosle, uh, GMIT Asian Paints. So as one of the largest uh, paint companies in Asia, serving customers in over 60, 60 countries, what precautions you are taking to protect your data in light of the rising number of cyber security attacks and upcoming data privacy legal, uh, legalization? Yeah, uh, uh, thanks for having me on the panel and interesting question there. Just to give a context, uh, more than 50% of India sees our products every day because it's on, it's on, uh, on the walls. And uh, while we've been operating largely with uh, an ecosystem of uh, contractors and dealers, it's in the last uh, few decades, we have really started going direct to customers. We were offering painting services, and now we are, uh, we are doing an entire beautiful home service, which means an uh, design, uh, uh, interior design, and then followed by execution, which means that we are going to go aggressively in terms of reaching out to customers. And clearly, uh, we need to have, and considering that there's going to be a regime coming in, uh, we've started our preparations well in advance so that we should not be waiting for uh, 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 legislation to come and then we start working on it. So clearly, uh, we, we've internally thought on how uh, co consent needs to get managed, uh, what are the various customer touch points, and we have sort of implemented a few systems which allows us to manage cons consent across the customer lifecycle, and that, that itself is helping us prepare uh, for some of these legislations which are coming. Uh, on, on the overall uh, security side, uh, clearly uh, uh, we, our security program would have begun in 2013 wherein we had a formal program announced. But, <clears throat> sorry, what we're doing is we are regularly calibrating where we are in this journey and uh, we've, we've used the NIST framework uh, when it comes to uh, managing this space. Uh, and when we last did it, uh, just post the pandemic, we identified areas. So the focus areas now in terms of how do you uh, get the business teams involved in, in a shared responsibility? How can you get the other CXOs in the organization also start looking at this ent entire area of uh, data uh, info security Seriously, nominate champions who will work with the security team, nominate champions who look at the alerts coming from various monitoring systems, have workflows to, uh, so, so once you get into that regime, then it becomes that much more powerful because your employees are the, I think biggest or the most potent uh, uh, form of defense or they could be the weakest link in the whole thing. Uh, and clearly, the other area which we are driving is how do you uh, get this en entire uh, awareness across? 
uh, at all levels, uh, at a developer who is coding it, how can you ingest security practices as he's coding it? At an employee user level, how do you make him understand what is a phishing mails or uh, how does he report it to the security team? The extended partner ecosystem which is connecting to us, our suppliers. So I think it's complete a 360 degree view in terms of ensuring that uh, we have safe practices and we'll constantly keep, this is a journey and it never ends. So that, that thing keeps going on and on and on. Absolutely, sir. Completely, I uh, you know I agree with you, uh, Mr. Bagga. I would uh, like to ask you, being a, a new age health tech company, how are you seeing this evolution, the you know data driven ecosystem, and now analytics? I think you have been I've, we have interacted quite a lot, and you have been using analytics, intelligent analytics, to extensive way. How are you uh, leveraging data, and what are some of the uh, highlights you would have for our audience here? Yeah. I think. Uh, for, uh, like I work at Pristine Care and which is one of the fastest growing healthcare, health tech startups. And uh, uh, I think one of the reasons that I would say uh, we have grown really fast, we've become a unicorn as well last year, is because our intense focus on data, uh, the data driven decisions that we make, we don't make any decisions anecdotally, it's all based on data. And when we think about it, uh, the business we are in, we are into elective surgeries and we help patients uh, identify the right surgeon and then identify the right hospital where the surgery can be done by our own surgeon. So for us, the patient's data points, uh, there are a lot of data points in the journey, starting from identifying the right disease to identifying the right surgeon that will do the surgery, then identifying the right hospital, then helping the patient in the complete journey of admission, the insurance related paperwork, everything, and getting the post-discharge, everything. The complete journey has multiple data points and that's a two to three day journey. And for us to improve or grow faster, we have to look at data at each step. For us, stats are extremely important. We look at stats like religiously. <laughs> we are looking at data and uh, making decisions based on that. Uh, so yes, uh, for us data is extremely important and uh, making sure that data is available to the complete organization and there is a huge focus from our uh, CXOs to uh, look at the data and uh, make decisions intelligently on that. Sure, sir. Thank you. Just quickly, is scaling become a challenge? Uh, that does it? Uh, it becomes a challenge, especially you know, uh, accelerating the innovations throughout the organization. So uh, I think uh, the good part is in the past I've worked in multiple enterprises where I've built data platforms. Uh, so that has given us a good uh, head start on how do we can uh, manage the data, keep the data uh, secure, make. Uh, uh, actually keep PI data if and if it's required, otherwise not even keep data, but while keeping all the other data points that will help us grow, make decisions. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we are at a decent stage right now and uh, because of the focus of data from the day one, uh, I think our, uh, we are on a right track. Sure, thank you. I would like to understand from Mr. Neeraj, uh, you know, being uh, uh, as one of India's largest retailers, uh, how do you see, you know, improving data continuously and leveraging it for uh, uh, analytics because there's too much data. We, we all have been, uh, you know, deliberated on, uh, on this aspect. So could you please share your thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, thank you so much and good afternoon. Uh, and I think uh, this is the biggest panel. The number of audience is much lesser than the open panels. Okay. <laughs> So, so uh, coming back to the point, so uh, all of you must be the customers of DMART uh, and you must have experienced that DMART does not gather or collect or store any data of any customers, okay? So from that point of view, uh, and I represent e-commerce uh, unit of uh, DMART, which is completely different IT setup and completely different uh, delivery channel as well. So uh, when we started our journey about uh, five and a half years back, uh, we were not having any access to any data points that, uh, you know, uh, though DMART is in the business for more than 20 years now, so we did not have any access to any customer data points. So we had to build our data on our own. So, uh, and now, uh, in this journey as well, what we are doing is we are only collecting data necessary for delivery of that particular order. We are not, and we are not using that data points for any other things. This is primarily because, uh, you know, first of all, we don't want to bombard any of our customers with, uh, you know, any loyalty programs or anything like that. We know that with our services, uh, we will uh, continue to attract people, attract customers to our format. 
So, and, uh, you know, as I must have spoken earlier to many of the, you know, colleagues here, so basically uh, what happens, uh, when we started our business, uh, we were present only in Mumbai and for uh, three years we were present only in Mumbai. During pandemic, we spread across or added 12 cities more in our, you know, in our armory. So pandemic has actually helped e-commerce business uh, to a large extent and, uh, you know, our customer base has also increased and, uh, you know, we have done all these things without any access to any data of our customers. Absolutely, sir. Before I move to our next uh, uh, CIO panelist, I have a question for Abhishek. Uh, Abhishek, we all, uh, you know, we, uh, we talked about data and understandably it's a, it's a challenge how to leverage it effectively. You basically, you know, you, you see data and the how to leverage it for AI ML we are talking about, how to leverage it, uh, you know, efficiently. But over the last few years, we have also seen, like Sir has also pointed out, some of the organization are also finding it challenging to leverage AI ML to the fullest of their capabilities and still trying to evolve. So could you please share some of the challenges that businesses, uh, both uh, large and uh, startups are facing and how to address that? Yeah, sure. Hey, thanks for having me on the panel. Uh, you know, good to see so many uh, you know, CIOs thinking along the lines of analytics and all. Uh, so yeah, I mean, when we talk about, I think, uh, in 2022, uh, if we talk about whether, you know, having data makes sense or there is insights that one can unlock from data, I mean, no one is even debating that part of it, right? I think the piece that people generally struggle with, okay, I see that there is merit in that, but how do I sort of operationalize it? And frankly, if I were to look at challenges, uh, well, there are quite a few, but uh, top three, if I were to call out, one, of course, is, you know, uh, just the whole limitless, uh, types of data that we deal with today. Uh, you know, over the last decade or so, we've seen an unprecedented growth, uh, you know, in the volume of data that can be captured, stored, recorded. I mean, if you look at your phone alone, I think every day we are adding, what, close to 200, 300 MB of data just in our mobile phones because of all the messages that we are getting, uh, right? So more than the quantum, the size of the data, it's the whole unpredictable uh, nature of data, which is the challenge here. Data comes in all shapes, all forms, uh, you know, source, speed, Right, so how do we deal with all of that data? Right, that's one. Uh, you know, the second aspect is, uh, you know, just to, just various workloads that have come up. I mean, gone are the days when, you know, we looked at just SQL for anything and everything, right? Now we've got different workloads, you know, ranging from various programming languages to machine learning frameworks, you know, to real-time stream processing to data-intensive applications and all. And we need to figure out how to bring all of these workloads together to op operationalize innovation, right? Um, and that's the other challenge that, you know, companies deal with. Uh, third, if I were to, uh, it's the whole limitless reach of data, right? Today, uh, you know, we have different stakeholders who need data, you know, we need employees, you know, suppliers, uh, you know, data is going beyond the boundary of the organization as well. You know, how do we sort of provide data to all of our stakeholders, uh, you know, and ensuring uh, security and the right, uh, you know, levels of authorization are in place. Uh, so these are primarily the top three challenges that in general companies are facing. Probably one final bit, which is less on the tech side, is on the people side of it. Uh, given the, you know, the fact that there's so much of complexity that we're dealing with, how do we even upskill our people? How do we ensure that our workforce is up to the task? Right. So if I were to call it, these are some of the challenges top of the mind that at least we are seeing in the field. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Abhishek. Uh, uh, and you, uh, you rightly said too much of data and complexities are certainly increasing. Uh, Rajiv ji, uh, would you agree with Abhishek and being, you know, one of the largest, in, uh, uh, India's largest conglomerate, do you also think is managing too much of data is a challenge? And how are you planning to address this channel within your organization? You have been a veteran in the field, so your thoughts? Yeah, I, I certainly agree with what Abhishek just said. Uh, yes, being the largest uh, media conglomerate of India, uh, we have data dating back to 1838 as well. So it's almost 185, 84-year-old uh, data we, we have in our system. So we, and we segregate into multiple 
facets of business that go across for our data. See, one is the content, which is almost 103 year old content. Then comes our advertising sales, which, which also caters to how the pricing engines are run. So they have a lot of historical data. Uh, the pricing of the ads that you see on newspaper are actually a very complex uh, algorithms work behind it. It's based on machine learning. Then we have got, when you give targets to our, our sales people, they are being given on visual analytics on a daily basis. And uh, uh, they have to p perform according to those targets. Then comes our editorial business. They are also when a lot of news, we collect a lot of data from across the world when you have to give the infographics. So those infographics, the good looking diagrams that you see are actually based on a lot of uh, data collected on the fly, machine learning done on them and presented into a very uh, intuitive manner to the readers. Uh, of course, uh, we, why we got rated as one of the most trustworthy, trustworthy and credible news uh, company uh, in the last Reuters in Oxford uh, uh, research report because we also take care of the sensitivity of the news, if it is leaning to right or left. So we, we try to make it sent up. Some people may not like it because today AI is driving people towards extreme left or extreme right through the AI modules. So how to keep center and how to keep the news objective also we try to take care of it. Uh, then comes a lot of our brand campaigns which are done. So we collect a lot of data during our brand campaigns and events uh, like a Times of Better India or the Art of India or the Trust of India, organ donations, soil, water conservation which we do with Sadhguru. So all these, there are uh, not one but hundreds of these campaigns going around. Uh, we do approximately more than 3,000 events and cap campaigns a year. So the amount of data collected from them is humongous. Yes, the quality of the data collected may be of question mark, but uh, somehow we have to uh, get those clean up and, and work on them. Then there are a lot of uh, personal connect events like Happy Street and all. So in all those events, a lot of data. So that disparity in or disparate number of data, amount of data we collect is, is humongous. I'll take you now to the, some of the digital properties which the print business also runs. So besides, uh, we have got uh, like millions of millions of uh, consumers that come onto our online, but there are others like e-paper, e-paper.timescript.com. Now that has a separate set of data uh, or uh, uh, this gold podcast, ET play, economic times play. So all these have a separate sort of uh, audience and data and then a lot of analytics goes behind to ensure that a right marketing campaigns or the people uh, get the right amount, uh, right campaigns are tar targeted, not targeted, I would say to their interest it is given to them so that they don't miss out on something that may be important to them always. So it's a whole plethora of things that we have to take care of uh, and, and it's quite complex I would say. I'm, sh I'm sure and uh, I would like to recognize being a uh, a journalist myself, the Times was in fact one of the few uh, Indian companies who actually accelerated the transition to digital. And they, they, they did in massive way as some of the other organizations, they tried to play the catch-up game, but I think by that time it was a little late. It would be difficult to even catch up now. <laughs> <laughs> You're far ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rohitji, before I come to you, I have a question, with, uh, question for Ipsita. Uh, Ipsita, uh, you know, how do you put, uh, how, what, in your opinion, uh, needs to be done to put data analytics to work for competitive advantage? And uh, according to you, what kind of analytics strategy and architecture support is needed in today's transformative times? Sure, thank you. Um, so I would like to start by uh, using a metaphor. Uh, a rocket ship is like an enterprise. So there are two kinds of companies, ones that are building a rocket ship, ones that have already built a rocket ship need to ensure that it's flying around safely and data is being collected in real time, things are being monitored, there are no incidents or accidents. Uh, so for an enterprise, having access to real time data is the most important item. Second order item is to be able to understand the data, derive insights, and make decisions on the go. 
Now, coming back to Abhishek's point around staffing up a team for the same, it's an equivalent challenge. How do you find the right skill set? So what uh, we try to uh, make happen in terms of architectural strategy is make it simple enough that different sets of users can use the same data in various different formats. So self-serve analytics, there are various layers being built on top of the data, so it's intelligible, not just to a uh, layman, to a business user, to a data engineer, to a data analyst, to a CIO, at their respective levels of thinking. Um, one way to do this is to really understand what are your competitive triggers. Are they internal or external? Internal triggers could be various ratios that you need to, financial ratios that you need to uh, maintain for the public markets. Are you able to uh, turn through that data in real time? How are you operating? Uh, what are your margins, et cetera? And there are second order questions of, are you in the right markets? Are you even targeting the right customers? These are various questions that, are, that an executive needs to tackle, not just on a quarterly basis, but on a daily basis. So uh, getting those reports and dashboards built through something like Looker or Data Studio would be extremely useful in this regard. Um, the second order external focus of competitive advantages, markets, products, client segments, uh, are you targeting them right with the right set of solutions? Recommendation engines could help you do that. But again, when, when we talk about artificial intelligence, it sounds like this esoteric approach that is reserved for a, a very uh, less number of the population, but it's not. Honestly speaking, like MLOps simplifies it and democratize, uh, democratizes the field to an extent that you can actually experiment with models in real time and let the machine make the decision around which is the best solution for a particular problem and then make it automated in a manner that those decisions are being generated uh, at a specific interval that is required. Thanks a lot uh, for sharing your perspective. Rohit ji, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Ipsita, uh, rightly she states that, and in fact, some of our other panelists also uh, are touched upon the talent part, the people part. And that is certainly one of the biggest uh, a ch a challenges. Could you highlight, I mean, you know, what are the key challenges uh, uh, senior leaders like you, IT leaders like you, and businesses face uh, when putting a strong analytics agenda in place? Rohit ji, this question is. It's for me? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first of all, I want people to know that using data is not wrong, as long as it's lawful and compliant. And if you use the data to the advantage of your customer, I think you're doing uh, the justice to your customer, because they come to you to get the best value for the buck that they're gonna spend with you in any form and shape, right? So using a lawful compliant way of data is perfect. Uh, at Walmart, uh, the, the main purpose is we help customer live better every day. And the only way we can help our customer live better is that the every penny that they spend is valuable to them with the highest quality product, timely delivery of the product, and ensuring they get the best price. And statistics says that 90% of US population shops at Walmart. Now, when you have that huge responsibility on your shoulder, you wanna make sure you do the right thing for your customer. And the only way you can do it is you collect the information about the customer, right? Things like when, when they go online, you show them the relevant products the product that they're more likely to buy. Save the time. Instead of having them spend too much of time on your, on your website, help them to achieve their tasks fastest possible with the best quality and the lowest price, right? That's when they'll come again and again. So improving the search relevance, personalizing the experience, right? Also ensuring what's closest to you that's available and that I can deliver in half an hour, an hour, right? Because we have like more than 5,400 stores across uh, America. Now, if me as a customer log in and wanting to have that product, and if I can find that inventory five miles away and deliver within two hours, imagine the joy that you feel. I'm sure a lot of people, you know, when they uh, order, they feel really, really happy, right? Because they got it in like say two hours, half an hour. And that's what we use the information about the customer to their advantage so that they get the best price. We also use the same information at a very aggregate level so that we can help the people who are manufacturing these products. So they are optimized in what they build so that they can improve their supply chain, stocking, we also do the same. 
And also we help the marketplace sellers so that you know, they can reach to the right audience. And all this can only happen when you have a proper data strategy. And obviously AIML now, I think everybody talks about it. In many places people use, use it rightfully and many places people end up not using the value. So the biggest value can only be created when you know the purpose of the data that you collect, the purpose that you create out of it to the advantage of your customer, so that in the ecosystem, you are a value creator. And that's what Walmart believes in. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, Rohit ji. Uh, uh, I'll quickly probably come back to all the panelists for one quick question. Uh, but before that, uh, Abhishek would like to understand you basically, uh, uh, you know, hear about the challenges they are facing and, you know, senior enterprises. Uh, and you, you also talked about uh, how, you know, integrating processes and, of course, uh, the AIML capabilities. There are a lot of things needs to be done. So how is Google is basically equipping enterprises to manage uh, such uh, challenges? And what, what are the new, I mean, how do you see the, it is evolving in future? I mean, uh, technologies. Yeah. Sure. So I'll keep it, you know, pretty crisp for everyone's benefit, right? So I practically talked about three sets of challenges, right? Limitless types of data, you know, limitless workloads, right? and of course the limitless reach of data. Uh, in terms of data types, if I were to just take one of our service, which is, uh, you know, let's say, BigQuery here, right? uh, you know, a lot of people look at it as it's a data warehouse, but it's actually a pretty unified, intelligent platform that allows you to do analytics there. Uh, it, not just SQL anymore there, right? You can do search, you can, you know, run Spark jobs, you can, you know, it supports all of that, right? Uh, it comes with, you know, built-in uh, ML, a lot of other functionality as well, right? Uh, in terms of, if I were to talk about uh, the workloads aspect of it, right? Uh, you know, we got services around data proc and some of the other services in the analytics space that they can leverage, right? And finally, when I look at the reach aspect of it, right, that's where, the whole ecosystem of powerful BI solutions comes in, right? So if Sita sort of mentioned about Looker, right, there's Data Studio, right? Using that, you can generate reports depending upon your stakeholders and, you know, comes with built-in security constructs, which, you know, gives you that peace of mind that, okay, I am providing my data, I'm opening it up, not just for my internal stakeholders, but for the world, but, you know, they're authorized to have access to it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We have a uh, uh, few minutes. Uh, uh, I'll, just in case if any of our attendees, uh, any of the leaders have any specific question with any of our panelists, uh, if uh, anyone would like to ask, otherwise I'll just quickly reach out to them. Any, any, any question for the panelists? You know, the largest data what we talked uh, is from Google and uh, from uh, you, Mr. Right. I just want to know that, I mean, uh, how much attention uh, uh, do you give for the data architecture uh, per se uh, when, uh, you know, an, any enterprise probably wants to start their journey because many of the times we start the journey and then we realize that uh, the data synchronization is not happening and we actually feel it is haywire and then probably putting the strategy in place uh, becomes the challenge. So uh, can you just throw some light on what sort of strategy uh, you suggest or maybe two or three, uh, you know, advices uh, before we start the journey or even after we start the journey? I mean, because architecture makes a lot of uh, differences uh, once you get into the data analytics per se. No, no, absolutely. I think you hit the nail right, at, right on its head. Uh, you know, often what we see is, uh, you know, people tend to put the cart in front of the horse and the other way around. Uh, you know, I walked into meetings where people are like, you know, I want to use Hadoop on, uh, you know, Google, right? Or I want to use, uh, you know, Kubernetes, right? And they lead with, you know, technology or products. Uh, what they need to focus on is, uh, see, any new tech is, doesn't mean necessarily it will be relevant to you or it re it's relevant to your uh, you know, use case. So as you rightly said, first I think it's very imperative we understand what the current pain points are, what is it that we are trying to solve for. Then we look at the architecture aspect of it, we design you know, what needs to be done in order to fix that. And the last piece essentially comes which should be the right product. 
Uh, I mean, if I look at Google, for example, you know, we've got plenty of services. Uh, the reason we have so many services, not just one service, because, you know, we believe, you know, uh, there can't be just one uh, solution for all the problems, right? So very imperative, we understand what we are trying to solve for, align the right technology post that, and then come up, you know, uh, with the right sort of blueprint in terms of how do you want to go for it. And technology is just a part of it, right? There's the people part of it as well, right? And, uh, you know, the architecture, the tech, and the people part, when all three come together, only then the chances of success goes up. Thanks. Absolutely, sir. My, uh, my apologies, Pankaji, I missed out. Uh, I was actually, I, I kept one interesting question for you, but since I was <laughs> managing it for, from here. Uh, uh, would like to understand Reliance Retail, uh, AGO fashion uh, and lifestyle is doing some exceptional thing. I mean, I have been uh, uh, a great fan of uh, uh, this particular app. So what crucial steps can a business leader take to transform their company into data-first organization? And, you you know, being uh, now Reliance is taking some really great steps to being a digitally driven company. Uh, how are you managing the overall data ecosystem and what in your experience uh, are some of the, uh, you know, uh, future looking statement that you would like to make? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, you know, in, uh, in our business, of course, you know, the whole value of data is how can we help consumer to first discover the right product that they want at the right time, pricing, promotion, and fulfillment, you know, uh, goes to inventory management that where we place inventory so that we can uh, deliver the customer uh, faster. And not only faster, you know, we talk about faster, but it also at the right time. I may deliver you something at two hours at your home when you are not at home, right? So that also is important that delivering the right value at the right time <laughs> at the right place, right? Of course, uh, uh, as you already mentioned, that it is important to design the architecture and strategy right. And, uh, you know, we go with technology that use Kubernetes, uh, which does not work. And there is no silver bullet either, right? So it is not that, you know, this technology would solve all the problems for me or that would solve all the problems for me. We have to understand our context, our use cases, our business environment, and then choose the appropriate set of technology to build the solution uh, that can deliver uh, the value to us. So some of the things which are important to consider uh, when you go on a data platform strategy is that uh, what type of data, how much of it is structured, unstructured, multimedia, you know, what type of queries I am going to run, it, run on it, you know, what is my in-house talent, you know, as Bishik mentioned talent is a big part of it, right? And some of the platform may have long learning curve, which becomes an important aspect to con consider what is the rigidity of a schema, what is the manageability of the thing, right? So for example, some of them are uh, where you have to provision, right? It is scalable, but you need to decide. Whereas, you know, serverless computing, which is auto scale, then come a question about uh, cost. So I remember uh, I was in an advertising tech company around a decade back. We were working on EMR, Hadoop, and then we moved to this uh, seamless scalability thing. The prototype was great. We quickly go, went into production, and suddenly the cost became five times. Right? And it took us another one and a half or two months to optimize the cost, right? Because when it is seamless and uh, auto scale as per load, your control and transparency is also limited unless until you have a deep understanding of it. So I believe these are some of the various important element uh, which are important in defining the platform strategy. And as far as uh, the question you asked about how to bring data mindset, uh, again, as we go into shift left journey on uh, quality or security, I think data has the same need bake it right from the beginning of definition of the product you are building, right? So as we have functional and non-functional performance scalability requirement, uh, the requirement doc should also have the data and the corresponding analytics requirement baked in from the beginning rather than this being an afterthought. So there's some of the sort of learning that I can share. 
Thank you very much, sir. I uh, quickly, I know the time is up. Quickly, uh, just one last thing. I mean, the artificial, sir, from you only, Pankaji. Uh, uh, from uh, AGO perspective, uh, there is one more interesting thing what I have found. Uh, you know, the feedback mechanism is good. Uh, it's much better than some of the earlier uh, Reliance platforms. So has there been uh, an intelligent strategy uh, that you are planning to put in place or, or, or you are trying to evaluate? So again, it's about start from the problem and then look at solution is the fundamental I'm repeating. For example, we talk a lot about personalization and a lot of time we would have seen that I have recently bought a 60-inch TV, right? And then I am seeing only TV uh, as top in my list. But my chances of buying another TV is very uh, less likely. So basically, if you go with, say, plain vanilla, you saw this, hence, this is what you would be looking for is, is not the right uh, strategy in that case, right? Uh, so we not only look at what user have been looking at, but we also look at where user are dropping. For example, uh, look at abandoned cart behavior. Look at where the drop-offs are happening. Right? So I think it is important to also uh, look at holistically and continuously evaluate that is your data strategy, is your analytics is giving you the right insights. Uh, the other important thing is breaking the silos. Right? How can we combine data that is coming through multiple channels uh, and streams uh, to create a much more uh, better understanding of user behavior and be conscious of that user behavior are not a static thing. It's also changing, and especially in fa fashion, fashion is known as a very fast-changing stream, right? So, so I think those nuances are also very important. And combine artificial intelligence and autonomous learning with maybe your domain understanding and external trends as well. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you for th thank you for your thoughts, uh, Ipsita. Uh, in 40, 30 to 40 seconds, if you can explain why data transformation is incomplete uh, without an analytics modernization, analytics focused modernization, and quickly share your closing remarks. Sure. Yeah, I'll try to summarize it. Um, so, any business decision at the end of the day becomes a strategic or tactical decision. Tactical decisions, of course, don't take too much of your time. Strategic decisions, a lot of risk associated with it. How do you really know you're making the right choice? And that's where data comes into play. Um, whether it's a decision about a customer, a key client segment, market, product, you need that data to churn behind the analysis to ensure that you have a reasonable degree of confidence to arrive at a decision. Historically, this was done through management consultants, very manually uh, operated methods as well, um, statisticians. But now we are seeing that there's a level of automation available through the usage of the latest and greatest and machine learning technologies that enable you to at least have a bird's eye view of the problem before you have to make a decision and inform your board of directors or senior stakeholders. Um, that's one aspect of it. Uh, why digital transformation should be analytics focused? Uh, my answer would be you're running around, uh, you're running a rocket ship, but how do you ensure that it's stable and in space and aligned at the correct angle for the destination it's set for? If you don't have the right level of analytics set up, you would never know whether you're going in the right direction or not. Maybe you would know at certain moments in time on a quarterly basis, on a monthly basis, but you really want to wait that long to make a decision to course correct. You really need that decision to be made in minutes, if not hours. Uh, that's why you should be analytics first. Thank you very much for such an interesting insights to all our panelists. Can we have a big round of applause, sir? Thank you very much.